Hello everyone, Kevin from Tech Select here, and I hope your 2024 is off to a great start. The Commander X16 systems have been coming back from manufacturing slowly, and we've been shipping them as we're able. If you haven't received yours yet, don't worry, we'll get to you as soon as we possibly can. I'd like to mention too that there have been so many people involved in the creation of the hardware, the operating system, and the software. I, I really don't know where to start, but I just wanted to say thank you so much. I am truly humbled by the support we've received from so many pre-orders and so many backers. I know I've said this before and I'm probably horribly biased, but I really think the Commander X16 will be one of, if not, the best homebrew computers to date. We're only at the very beginning of the system's life cycle and we have so many plans for the future. Thanks for being part of the journey with us. We really appreciate it. With that future in mind, I've been working on several different expansion boards for the system, and the very first target that I had in mind was a serial card. I did some research and found an IC which actually has two serial ports in one. It's a full UART and supports up to 1.5 megabits. In practice, I know it can be difficult to achieve speeds like this on common serial ports, and while discussing the card with a few folks, someone suggested that I use MIDI for the second port. Initially, I had other plans for that port, but I love MIDI, so I decided to look into it further. MIDI is a serial interface which uses standard 5 volt TTL levels instead of RS-232 serial voltage levels. In addition, the MIDI specification states that the baud rate should be 31.25 kilobits per second, plus or minus 1%. Many older UARTs used a 1.8432 MHz crystal for their base speed. The UART takes this clock speed and divides it by 16, which gives it its maximum base rate of 115.2 kilobits per second. You might recognize the speed if you used BBS software back in the day, or maybe even early internet connections. The UART I selected uses a crystal running at 18.432 megahertz. This allows for a maximum theoretical speed of 1.152 megabits per second. However, the transceiver ICI used will only work effectively up to 1 megabit. This really allows the next division down, which is 576 kilobit, as the most practical speed. But even that will probably require a very well shielded cable in practice. But feel free to experiment, it theoretically should be able to do it. MIDI works with this card because if you take the 1.152 megabit base speed and divide it by 37, you get a 31,135 baud. This is actually only 0.3% off of the MIDI specification. So now that I knew MIDI would work, I designed and I built my first prototype. Mooing Lemur was able to modify Melodius to send MIDI data to it. We had to work out a few issues, but it turns out we were able to make it work. I posted a video of that successful run not too long back, and someone had suggested in the comments, hey, why not add a wavetable header? And I thought, wow, that's a great idea. It's actually going to work really well because we can inject the audio directly into the X16's bus and out through the main output. So I went ahead and I made a second version of the card, and now I'm ready to show it on video. I'd originally planned to capture the video and the audio from the X16 directly. Unfortunately, my VGA capture solution is not the best, so I decided to just go ahead and capture the audio using my Behringer Euphoria UMC404 HD. It's pretty far from hi-fi, but it's probably better than an average sound card input. I decided to play the ubiquitous Canyon.mid general MIDI file for my tests. I play this back on three different sound devices to compare them. The first is the onboard YM2151 with no add-on cards. And please note that this test is far from a fair assessment of the true potential of the YM2151. It's using a bank of general MIDI instruments to play back the file, and a more tailored version like those made for the OPL3 would probably sound much better. The second test uses an S2 MIDI wavetable, and the third uses a Dream Blaster X1. The X1 is actually quite a bit quieter than the S2, so please pay attention to the noise floor as I have to increase the gain and decrease the gain for various noise sources. And for some bonus footage, I decided to plug my modified Realistic MG1 into the MIDI port so you could see it playing back a real analog synthesizer. I just played back a baseline MIDI file that I found and mess around with it for a few minutes. Uh, not anything special, but I just thought it'd be interesting to see it actually playing back an analog synthesizer. Did I mention that I love MIDI? 
Thanks for watching and have a great day.